Hey there internet, I am the PC Goblin, and today we're going to be finally testing out NVLink SLI on my system. So my system is a 7700K, overclocked to 4.7 or 4.8 gigahertz, it's being cooled by Kraken X62, and I've got 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, which is 3066 megahertz I believe, and then I'm running two RTX 2080 Ti's. So. When I'm going to be disabling SLI, I'm not taking a card out, I'm not going to be disabling the slot, I'm just going to turn off SLI, run it as is, and then I'm going to run it and show, show you what it is when I'm running in VLink. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's start testing. Okay, so first things first, we're running the latest version of the GeForce driver, so 4.17.01, released 1126, and VSync is off and configure SLI, and then disable SLI, apply, put out a cam. All right, we're gonna disable SLI, apply. So we make sure all the settings are max and VSync keeps turning itself on. Okay, VSync is off. Running the benchmark. Here we go. All right, so on a single GPU, we got frames rendered 85, 66, average FPS of 55, and then minimum FPS of 80, wait, that's CPU, of 46 on GPU, max of 87, average of 55, like I stated earlier, 95% of the time it was at 48 frames a second. So, now that we've got single card out of the way, let's enable SLI. Everything's still set to max, so time to run the, run the benchmark. So now that this is done, Zoom in a bit on that. We got 15,000 frames. So last time it was 85, 56. So just about twice the performance. Average FPS was 96 versus 55. Uh, minimum frames was 88. Max 152. Average 103. And then 90 for, yeah, 95% of the time it's 92 frames a second. That's incredible. Okay, SLI is disabled. We got Mountain Peak, 70.5 FPS, min of 19, max of 108, Syria, 46.8 FPS, min 7.8, max 84.07, geothermal 45.17, min 31.84, max 58.71, overall score 54.65 FPS. All right, enabling SLI. All right, so we got 132.13 FPS for Mountain Peak. Last time we got 70.57, so almost 100% gain. Syria, we got 88.56. Last time we got 44 or 46.82, so once again, almost 100%. Geothermal, we got 80.95. Last time we got 45. So that wasn't quite as good. And then the overall score this time was 101.23 with MVLink. Without MVLink, a single card was 54.65. Okay, now we're moving on to Middle Earth's Shadow of War. So disable this ally. Here we go. FPS was 136 with GPU response time 0.6 milliseconds. All right, time to quit out. And enable SLI. Settings all look good. 
Okay, so we got 155 frames, so a gain of like 20 frames, that's terrible. And then everything else looks about the same. Okay, with the results of Middle Earth Shadow of War, I'm really curious about if this this kind of results is how I how it works inside of Batman, like Arkham Origins or whatever. Where I've generally seen a pretty good bump in frame rates with doing SLI. So next we're gonna be looking at Batman Arkham Origins to see how that plays with SLI enabled on the 2080 Ti's. Okay, so I didn't show it, but SLI is disabled. We're running on one card. Options, graphics options. You sync off, everything is enabled. Benchmark. Okay, so we got our results. Max of 188 frames, average of 147, minimum of 100. So, in theory, if we see what we're seeing with most other games, we should see like 366 frames max, and minimum of 200, and average of 300. Okay, so SLI is now enabled. We got everything at max. Time to run the benchmark. Wow. It's almost the exact same results, but worse. That, that's terrible. So uh, I tried to do Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, but it doesn't do SLI or MV Link, whatever. So skipping that, moving on to Witcher 3. It doesn't have a benchmark, so I'm just gonna run around with fraps going. And as you can see, I've got SLI disabled, so we're gonna be running on a single card. Looks like we're getting about 90, 85. Drop down to 75. Okay. So got about a low of 74, 75, averaged at about 80-ish, high of like 85, 86. So closing that, enabling SLI. All right, here we go. SLI enabled, testing out performance. Ooh. Low 135. It looks like we're staying at about 140. No. Yeah, 140 on average, I'd say. Yeah. I don't know if you could see the little fraps number up in the top left, but we were seeing averages of about 130, 135. One time I saw it dip down to like high 120s, so like 128, 129, and then it got as high as up to like 150, 155. So a single card, we saw about 70-ish, 75. So two cards, we see almost 100% gains, running at like 135, up past 140. Those, those are huge gains, that's awesome. I wasn't very verbose with this at the very first of the video, but every game is set to as max setting as it possibly could go. Turned everything to 11 if I possibly could. So nothing was turned down to help it out at all. I was punishing the video cards as much as I possibly could with the resolution set to 3440 by 1440. Now, with that out of the way, what have we learned from this? Well. The games that don't support it or haven't been updated for to support the new video cards, well, they don't work out so well and it's really not worth doing. But the games that do, which seem like the majority of the games that do support SLI, they work really, really well and you get 2x performance. That's awesome. I've never seen that before on any of my other cards. My 980s, my 1080s, my 1080Ti's. This is huge performance gains with NVLink. I love it. 
win, complete win. It's awesome. So I hope developers take this and start supporting SLI in all their games and really boosting your performance from it. Cause it's cool. I love it. It's a win. Granted, I didn't test every game out there. I didn't test every game that I had. It takes tons and tons of time. This is a very small blueprint of what your performance may be. And in this particular setup with the 7700K or the mainstream chips, your two cards are gonna be running at 8X. So if you're running with one card, you'd be running at 16X and the performance will be a bit better with the single card running at 16X versus a single card running at 8X. There is a little bit of gain going from 8X to 16X. So if you've got a chipset that does support two cards running at 16X, you'll see better numbers than what I saw on my system here. So should you do this? Well, there's many different ways to look at this, but the way that I see it is if you have the money and it's not a concern, then get the very best cards you can and put them in NVLink or SLI and enjoy the performance when the performance is there. Now, that's not everybody, that's not the majority of people. If you're thinking about doing this, I would suggest getting the very best card you possibly can and enjoying the very best card. If you're already at the top tier, then you need to look at the games that you play and if they support SLI and NVLink. If they do, then yes, it's going to be worth it. If the majority of the games that you do play do not support SLI, then no, this isn't going to be worth it. Running with the very best card that you already have is what you want to do. In those cases, not worth doing SLI. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. I'd really love to know what you guys think about SLI with the new cards. But if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you want to see more of my stuff, go ahead and subscribe to my channel below. And I'll see you next time, guys.